Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Lily Lulu. This is the third time of starting this video today, so I'm hoping third time lucky. Um, if you haven't been here before, welcome. It's lovely to have you aboard and a warm welcome back to all my returning visitors. So today I'm carrying on with this um, Christmas in July file folder folio that I've been working on. I did say when I left off um, on the last video that I was going to go away and stitch around all this. I haven't done that. Um, the reason is I've decided I'm going to keep this for myself because um, I need to make, I've decided I need to make this and see exactly how everything pans out um, because I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with it as it is. Um, it's very, very flimsy. Now, I realise that I need to um, put decorative papers on all these panels, which is going to make it slightly sturdier. Um, but I can't work out if I should do the stitching before I stick the papers down. If I stitch round, are the papers going to cover the stitching up? Um, but if I don't stitch now, I probably won't be able to because I need to start putting the thing together. So because I don't quite know how it's all going to pan out, I've decided this is going to be my prototype. I'm going to keep this one for myself and I'm, I can make all my mistakes on this one. I can work out what I like and what I don't like. And then um, because I'm intending to make quite a few of these, I will know what I want to do moving forward. So that's why I haven't done anything um, else on here so far. So, um, and I've also decided I'm not going to put the extra um, tea dyed papers in here. Like I said, I was thinking of doing um, for the same reason. So there is quite a lot of space. I, I don't know if you can see in there. There is quite a lot of space in there, but because I'm intending for this bit to be like a December daily, I assume this is going to bulk up quite a lot. So I do need quite a lot of wiggle room in there. So I'm hoping that that's all going to work out. So what I'm going to do today or, or what I'm going to do next is stitch this signature into this little cover. So let's get that bit out of the way and get my bits and pieces together that I want. Um, now I think I am going to use some red embroidery uh, thread in this. Um, if you've been, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know I'm an X cross stitcher. Um, so I have masses of embroidery threads to use up. Um, but some of these because they, I stopped, used to store them in this folder, which is now falling apart. Um, I used to cut them to the length that I used to stitch with. Um, so a lot of these now are not long enough to use for um, sewing signatures in, but I have got a few that are slightly longer, like these ones, but they're not the right colors. Um, I could do green, there's quite a lot of green in this. So the green is an option, this one. That would work. I did have red in mind. Um, they, they're all quite short. So, and then I've got these others that haven't been is that the same colour? They're the same colours. Is that the same? Yeah, that's the same as that. So I've also got these. Um, so that that one works better with these papers, I think, than this one. So it's out of these two. I think I'll do the green for this one and this will be an option for my other, the others that I'll be using. So let's take this out. Obviously I don't need all of this, but. So if you want to know what color 
embroidery thread this is. This is a DMC embroidery floss and the colour is th number 3347 in case you're interested. So let's pop these away. This is what I love about junk journals. I know I've said this before, but whatever crafts you've done in the past, you know, because most people come to junk journaling from other crafty backgrounds, whatever you've done before, you can always use your supplies in some way and repurpose them for junk journaling. So now, is that one going to be long enough? this has obviously been used and this is what's been left at some point max keep quiet yeah so this is the third time i've started this video today one two three oh that should be enough and how many threads have i got there how many strands how many are there four um, yeah, my first attempt at filming, my daughter rang, <laughs> and then the second attempt, I literally just started, and Max decided he was going to have a barking fit at the window. So this is third time lucky, as I say. Hopefully, this one will be all right. Oh, I have got all the doors and windows open because it is so warm here, and I do have the washing machine on because I'm still trying to get the house back in order after dog sitting my daughter's dog so i'm halfway through um re-landscaping the garden that sounds a lot fancier than what i'm actually doing i'm laying membrane over the um, flower beds and popping down some um pebbles on top um and then i need to once that's all done, I need to sow some grass seed to try and repair the lawn. Um, and because our, our garden, in the winter when we first moved in, we had a lot of rain. And because obviously there was nothing growing in the winter, um, the garden just flooded and it got waterlogged and of course when you've got a dog the dog's running in and out churning up the mud um, and the grass that's alongside the footpath in between the little flagstones um, just got smothered and died so when it's wet it's just like a mud bath in the garden and then with all this hot dry weather we're having, all that mud has dried and we now have a dust bath in the garden. Every time um, the dog runs in and out or the wind blows, there's dust everywhere. And the house is, I can't keep it clean. It's absolutely filthy. It's shockingly bad. So I'm trying to repair the garden to deal with the dust problem um but also i do need to clean the house as well <laughs> but at the moment as soon as you clean the house the dust is just back um it really is disgusting so i'm sort of in between doing all these things and playing with my journals so i've got quite a big needle here so i hope my awl is big enough for this to go through now because this is not you know a big chunky book like i would normally make um i'm just going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch i think in this so um i don't need to be particularly you know really careful about um accuracy and everything because it's not a big chunky journal it's not holding in loads and loads of pages um, and the, the actual cover is going to be stuck into the base cover so it's all going to be fine so this is
eight, so the middle is four, and then if we go six and two. And then go to the middle of this roughly. from there where the middle is because I'm nice guy I'm just gonna draw a little line here um, as a reference point of where this is going to be sewn in. Very faint pencil line there and I've said oh, I'm not going to be too bothered about where the middle is and now I'm getting the ruler out and fiddling about let's just use what I've just done so I will want There's music paper, so that line's bl blending in. <laughs> Very useful. So that's where my holes need to be. So all I did there was just took out the centre page, folded it back on itself, marked where I want my holes to be, and then used that to make my holes in the same place on the spine. So I need my and I need my stubby book so we're going to have a hole here so I'm just making holes um, where I made those marks wondering if I should have done those top ones oh it's only for me it'll be fine I think on with in hindsight I maybe should have made those holes a little bit higher up and I can't see my mark now um yeah the in, closer to the top and the bottom for the two outer ones but hey ho we'll go with it we'll see what happens so I've just made my holes where I made those marks in that one so now I don't know why I got all those threads out I'm thinking I'm still doing a massive journal I'm only doing one signature I only needed one thread see what I mean <laughs> I'm really I seem to be struggling with this one for some reason right I'm not going to bother with clips and things I'm just going to go for it so I've gone into the middle hole from the middle of the signature and I'm going right through the middle hole on my binding as well. And I'm gonna go up to the top hole. I am gonna go up to the top hole. In there, try not to sew my pencil into the signature. And in the top hole in my binding, doesn't want to go through so just if your needle ever doesn't want to go through if you just go back the opposite way um, that normally helps there we go so that's it in the top hole pull that through then I'm going to go down to the bottom hole I hope you can see what I'm doing down to the bottom hole there and into the bottom hole on my binding and just yeah. 
more fingers and thumbs. Tighten that up. I'm just holding on to this thread as I tighten this one. And then we're going to go back into the middle hole, trying not to split the thread. So, not split the thread there. And back into the middle hole of the signature. This one doesn't want to come through. hope we haven't gone through the thread right now what you want is you want one of your threads to be on one side of that center and the other to be on the other side and then we can just tighten everything up that was far too long because I'm so used to using that's nice and tight um it's to sewing in sort of lots of signatures with a five hole pamphlet stitch I've totally overestimated how much thread I need so um, once I've tightened that up I'm just tying this with a double knot and then I'll trim those but I'm going to leave them quite long because I haven't decided what I want um, in the middle there yet whether I want to have a bow or if I want some something dangling or if I'm just going to cut them short so I can decide that later and then I'll just go through and um, settle all my pages give them a, a little bit of a burnish with my fingers just to you know get them to lay flat so that they're all nice and tidy so I hope everybody's well. I don't think I've asked you that today. Let me know what you're up to, what you're working on at the moment. And if there's anything you'd like to see me work on, please let me know. Anything you'd like to see me attempt. Um, you can see there I've got um, where those pages, the, the sizes were different. It's quite glaring on that page because it's the same paper. So, but as I say, this one I really couldn't get my head around it, so I decided I'm just going to do it and keep it for me. And then it, it's my prototype, and um, you know, if it goes wrong, it won't really matter. So, this will be stuck in here, and we'll have our little journal section here, and then the back piece will be our pocket. So that's what we've done there. Now, this is going to close over this. So we need a closure on here. And um, I'm going to do the button and string closure um, that was in the original video. Now, this is where I'm concerned because my book does feel very floppy and it does seem like there is lots of room there but i'm hoping i'm gonna make it work i think at some point i may have got this the wrong way round i have i've just realized i've made a mistake at some point i've glued these in upside down so my i don't know if you remember my bigger spine I've ended up with at the back rather than at the front um, because the big one has to go around the whole book and the little one is supposed to go around the journal so we're going to have to improvise we're gonna to have to pop that there hmm. I 
I knew I kept opening it the wrong way, didn't I? Hmm. Well, we could glue that down as a pocket. And we haven't got anything closing this bit. Um, and I don't really want that pocket there. So, hmm, here we go. Something's gone wrong. Right, I need to think about this. Just bear with me a moment. Right, what I'm going to do, because obviously I've stuck all these on upside down, you can see that the bigger um, spine is at the back and it really should be at the front so that I'm just talking this through to make sure I'm doing this right now. So this has got to be there. That's going to close it there. And then the whole thing is going to be closed like that. So you can see that all fits better. So because now everything is upside down inside here, I'm gonna get some packaging paper and cover it all. So, la di da di da. <laughs> oh dear I really feel like something's telling me I shouldn't be doing this but then I feel like I keep saying that every time I come on camera so I don't know anyway that's what we're going to go with um, I'm glad I just I realised before I actually stuck that whole signature in I'm just wondering what's going to be the best glue to use um and I think, I think what I'll do is just glue stick that and then I will run the machine around the edges um, just to make sure everything's stuck down properly. So I'm just going to cover this whole thing. I did try and see if I could remove these papers um, and reattach them up the other way but I can't so I know it's wasteful but um, I did toy with the idea of just making another cover but that means I need to go up into the loft to get another, another file folder and I don't feel like doing that today it's too hot so I thought oh I'll just cover it with packaging paper and that will also then help strengthen the thing because as I say it does feel very very flimsy so now you can see why I have decided that I was keeping this one for myself because I do feel like I'm making an awful lot of mistakes in this and I'm sorry if the washing machine is very loud um, it's decided it's going to do its spin now I can't get this all under the camera. Now if I hadn't rounded the corners on this, I would um, overlap this. You know, I'd fold this over um, and cover the edges as well. Um, but I, I, I really don't think I can cope <laughs> with the rounded edges doing that at the moment. So, let's get rid of this excess glue. And then get my scissors out and cut round this. hope <laughs> that when I do this next time I do it around the right way 
Right, I'm just going to um, go and get the sewing machine out. I'm going to stitch all around the edges here, trim this to size, and then I'll be back again. Wow, <laughs> I'm back again. Right, I think I'm at the point where I was before I realised my mistake. Um, so I have stuck the paper on and I've stitched all the way round and I've made sure that I've got my wider spine on the left hand side. I've put a little T up there so I know that's the top so that I won't make the same mistake again. Now the only difference is because I have now covered this um, with brown paper, I don't think I need to put a decorative piece of paper there now um, to protect the pocket because I think that looks quite nice as it is. So am I in frame? I think I've slipped down slightly. So I don't think I'm going to bother with some decorative paper there. I'm just going to pop that down. So, wow, <laughs> what a day. Now, I think the next thing, yes, what we were going to do before we were so rudely interrupted was to make a closure for this bit. So it was a button and string closure. So before I stick this down, I need to put my string behind it so that it can come over and wrap around a button there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So I'm going to need two pieces of string. I'm just trying, working out how long they need to be. They're gonna come around there. They're gonna go around the button a couple of times. Then we want a bit of hangy bit, so about there. And then I'll cut a second one the same because I'm going to have two button closures. So we'll snip that off there. And so um, let's see where these are going to be. Probably best to mark these, especially the way my day is going, <laughs> just to be on the safe side. I seem to have moved position uh since i started so where should we have these if we have one about there and then one about there So that's going to be two inches from each end. I'm going to put my string there and there. I'm just marking where I'm going to stick my string. So let's get a little bit of glue on here. Probably my glue's bunged up now because that was such a palaver. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each point. I'm going to lay my string in there. That's one. Now let's not stick the same end onto the other side. The way my day is going today, it would be quite likely I would do that. And I'd end up with a big loop instead of a string. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on top and then I am going to stick another piece of this packaging paper over the back um, just to protect my strings and make sure that there, there's nothing catching when you put something in the envelope because remember this piece is supposed to be an envelope. Thank you. 
Oh, it's so hot here today. This glue's just running. <laughs> Now, the nice thing about Kalau, it, it does ball up and rub off, so, because obviously we don't want anything sticky on here because this is going to be the pocket. We don't want anything catching as it's going in and we certainly do not want anything sticking once it's in there, so. Oh dear, I'm not having a good day today. Gonna trim this off here without cutting my string. I just want to make sure that these strings do not move. Um, you know, they don't pull out or anything, so. Just gently uh, uh, take. Can't even do my bottle up. <laughs> oh dear! Right, I'm just these edges. I'm just going to pop a little bit of um, glue stick here, just to make sure nothing catches there as things go in and out. Right. So that's that. Then these are going to come over and they will attach here. We'll have a button there and a button there. So they will be, that will be nice and secure. So all, what I need to do now is stick the actual thing down before we have any more mishaps. So. I'm going to pop glue and see this is lifting again just going to make sure I've got all the edges caught here so I don't want anything catching as it goes in and out the envelope in the pocket right so now I'm going to pop glue <coughs> on these three sides, because obviously this is going to be the pocket entrance, so I don't want to put any glue here. And I'm saying that for my benefit as much as yours, because at the moment, I don't trust myself to do anything correctly. So let's just pop. Because it's so warm here today, the glue is coming out quite quickly, so I'm just Right, I'm going to make a final check. I've got my T at the top, so this is up the right way. I've got my pocket here. The papers are up the right way, so we can go down. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that the edge of my spine here is just slightly away from this fold mark so that there's you know, no problems when we're opening and closing the whole folio. So I'm just going to leave just a little tiny bit of room there um, so that, you know, everything can open and close easily. And I'm gonna pop that in. And then I'm gonna make sure I've got this straight so that everything, there's nothing wonky going on with these pages in this pocket. So I'm just oh, straightening that up slightly so that that all matches. So this will be, um, I mean, I probably will use this this year, but I will, um, this will go in my, it won't go in my ideas book because obviously it will be too big, 
but I will use this as a reference, you know, in future um, when I want to make another folio like this because I can see now, you know, what's working, what's not, how everything's supposed to be. So that's now stuck in. So that's our journal stuck in. And there's our pocket. Obviously, I need to leave that to dry before I start fiddling about with it. And now I need to make my buttons to go on here so that we can close this up. So, um, I'm going to double up this, um, I think this will do. just to make my buttons, um, you know, a little bit stronger. I'm using a double piece of file folder. And I would like, that's going to be my decorative piece to go on top of my buttons. And I would like to find my circle punch, please. That's a flower punch, that's a butterfly punch. Neither of those are going to work for a button closure. I've got my two and a half inch circle punch. That's not going to work. Just cut my circle punch out. Was behind hiding behind my glue. <laughs> right, so let's get a couple of these. Try and avoid the scribble. dry enough not to mess my punch up. And let's glue these together. Okay, now I shall be wanting, excuse me, reaching over, I need my little punch, um, oh. Small eyelets seem to be missing. Don't want big ones. Okay, we'll use these instead. I'm probably looking at them and not seeing them. But that's alright, we can work with those. And 
which case I don't really need this, do I? I need my all, would be better. Shall I go with that? Will it matter? My, those holes might be a bit big for those, I'm thinking. Um, shall we have a look and see? These are probably not exactly in the center, but it'll be close enough. Um, so, go in. How wide is that? So, if I go about an inch in, I should be all right. Um, this. See my mark. Oh, yeah. And one about there. I'm getting a bit reckless now. <laughs> and then this is going to have decorative paper here, so um, these will be covered up. So that will go there so then this string will come around here and obviously I've left plenty of room because I'm expecting this to get fat maybe that might be a little bit too excessive though what I've left there we can uh, always trim them down so there you go that's how far we've got today it was a little traumatic, but we got there in the end. Please don't tell me I've done that again. <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera off now and I'm going to have a nice cup of tea. And I will be back again in a couple of days and hopefully things will go slightly more smoothly. Thank you for joining me today. Take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.